से हेलो गणेशन लाइव इट स्टिल सेज वेटिंग सेज लाइव आई एम लेट्स सी देयर इट गोस हेलो गणेशन लाइव yeah oh, it's like listening to us in the past i know right <laughs> yeah mute it says there's one waiting yeah oh, it's like listening to us in the past i know right <laughs> there we go all right gerald's on hey gerald what's up gerald. bro yeah see gerald hey big johnson's on all right yeah <laughs> Ray. Ray Ray says that we can get started now. All right, Ray, we will do that. <laughs> What's up everybody? Uh, I'm just uh getting squared away here, fellas. So if you want to start off, go ahead. I'm just doing a couple of things really quick. On my computer, my technology device. Your computer? Your yep. computer. All right. So we've got uh, Ray and Gerald. Anybody else coming in? Maybe we started too early. Who knows? There's four, but we got two. Maybe they're in shock because we actually started off when we said we would, as opposed to waiting three hours because of a technical problem. Right. Yeah, and we're all here. <laughs> oh. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, that's funny, Ray. Real funny. <laughs> I knew that was you know, do you know they still have not deleted that guy's channel? It's still, it's still I know they haven't. I know. Yeah. I, I, I looked at it today and I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. How many videos are left? Uh I there's still only forty I don't know, like I haven't counted because I was just like whatever. They are they're all still there and he's getting that thing's getting views too. Yeah, I know. Well, I think it's everybody who's leaving him hate message, which uh, messages, which is kind of funny. Some of the messages are pretty, pretty, pretty funny. Gotta say, oh, yeah, <laughs> I, do, I do appreciate all the support that I got from all everybody going out there and just giving this guy a hard time. I do appreciate that. But you know, they said that uh, people that do this, they don't even look at the comments. They never yeah. answer. It. Yeah, I figured as much. They're just doing it to try to get the, uh, I guess, the money for it or whatever. Yes. Although I don't know what money they're talking about. Big Daddy G's here. Philip Harper. Philip Harper. What's up? He's not gonna. He's not gonna make any money because you've got to have whatever ten thousand views before you can be monetized, and hopefully he'll be shut down before that ever happens. Right. Maybe they're yeah. just wanting to see how long he can go. <laughs> yeah. Gerald is uh, saying lots of people reported him. I know, man. I saw that. I was really, really happy to see everybody kind of rally around that uh, that righteous cause of justice, you know, because it was ridiculous. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, Ray's right. saying Big Johnson's home. Yes, I am. All right. So uh, as more and more people come in, all three of them. <laughs> uh, so Ray, or excuse me, Gerald is saying, can I use your videos too? Yeah, man, go for it. Who cares? They all suck anyway. <laughs> hey, you said it. No, just trying to be honest. Hey, Pops Quest is in the house. What's up, Pops? Paps? CZ Mafia for life. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to uh, drop a, a little bit of uh, some information now, and I'll do this throughout the next hour because I only plan on staying on this thing for an hour tonight. Um, so if you guys are interested in looking at a new website where you can go and get some handguns, you'll notice on my T-shirt right here, it says um, thegunguy.com. So that is a brand new website that has been created by a local guy from around here where I live. And uh, basically, if you're interested in buying guns, you know, check the website out. I'll put a link at the bottom of the description when the video is over so you guys can go right over there. And if you uh, sign up for his email and also if you spread the word through either, you know, whatever it is, Google Plus, Facebook, all these other great things, then you will enter yourself into a free gun drawing. And from what I'm looking at in regards to his websites, the prices seem pretty decent. Um, I would say on average with some of the other bigger uh, web companies out there. And the bonus is he offers free shipping, which is a big bonus, I know, especially for people who buy way too many guns like me. Um, so again, check it out, thegunguy.com. I think you'll really appreciate the customer service. You know, I know the owner and uh, no, I'm not getting anything free except for this t-shirt. And uh, I will tell you, he's a stand-up guy, but big believer in the second amendment and is very active in our local area with uh, the gun community. So if we could just support somebody like that, that would be great. 
Um, if you can, just spread the word. Because like I said, good guy, um, local business, and that's the type of people I want to support. So it is theGunGuy.com. Okay. All right. What else? Okay, is laughing about something. What are you laughing at? This episode is sponsored by the Gun Guy. Yes, theGunGuy.com. Yeah, uh, Smoking Locust. I might hold the sign up in the back saying theGunGuy.com. Yeah, right. right. Smoking Locust says, uh, "Oh shit, it's Timothy McVeigh and Johnny Bravo." <laughs> it's those two guys. Yeah, I know I'm Johnny Bravo, but. I'm trying to figure out. Probably, I'm thinking it might be KS. For yeah, so I don't look like Timothy McVeigh unless he got a good tan. Whatever. <laughs> oh, and the range. Hey, uh, also, everybody in the chat, go check out the range. He actually did his first video today. Hell yes. And I watched it. Go join that channel. So, hey, Wicked is saying we should talk about CZs for the eighth week in the row. Hey, that's a great idea because look what I got right there. How do you like that? That's right. Uh, I muzzled myself again. Sorry. It's, uh, it's okay. empty. Here it's you empty. go, Wicked. Where's the twofer? CZ. CZ for life. All right. No, now hang on. Hang on. Wait a second. And, and Wicked, you and I spoke about this uh, over comments. This one's for you, brother. A Glock 19, a new Glock 19. Very excited about this. Uh, this is the Vickers Lipsies, whatever freak out Glock. So. Very excited about that. It's nice to have a, a new Glock. I haven't bought a Glock in a while. So in other words, it's a Glock. It's a Glock. It's a good <laughs> Glock. I'll tell you what. I'll tell, I got to tell you, um, the sight picture on this thing is absolutely fantastic. It's beautiful. It's, it's one of the best I've seen. So I'm excited to uh, to, to keep shooting it. I put 100, 150 rounds through it uh, over the weekend, and uh, it uh, it's a good shooter. Well, that's cool. Paradox wants to talk about high points. I'm in on that. Oh, yeah. Those are uh, top-notch firearms, guys. <laughs> I have four holding up one of my safes. Let's see. Uh, what else is going on out there? Oh, Turner Humphrey said I have a good tan. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. <laughs> didn't say me. No, it's me. Um, you yeah. know, it's funny because I, don't, I know that uh, Wicked definitely wants to talk about more CZs, so I'm just going to start off with by saying I did get my P10 finally. And uh, I've had it for about a day and a half, and I've just been kind of messing around with it, looking at it, and kind of dry firing to get a good sense of it. And I just made a review right before this, and it's really a tabletop. It's not a review. It's just a tabletop. But, um, you know, one of the things that I definitely have to say is that uh, it, it's a good gun. I think it's a great gun, actually. And uh, do I think it's going to destroy Glock like they aim to do? Uh, no, I don't think it's going to do that. I think it's a very good gun. Um, but I def definitely think one of the guns that it stole a lot of its identity from is definitely the old uh, Steyr, uh, especially with this cutout. And I'll kind of explain that in the video when you, when I upload it, if I ever do, uh, because um, it's a good gun, but I don't think it's any anything to, you know, threaten any other market out there, because I think they're all good guns right now. Everything is good. What's up, Finger Lakes? The Finger Lakes on here. Uh... Yeah, actually, I saw the new Glock, the four and a half. I actually put my hands on it. It's got the front slide serrations and steel sights. The regular Glock. I know yours is a special edition. Okay, guys. You want to talk about your uh, your Glock there, KS? Uh, do I want to talk about it? I, I can. Um, I, you know, the, the, uh, the Vickers has the different grip on it. I think it's, it's like an RTF grip. Um, and, uh, and so it's got these tiny, tiny little beads on them and uh, they're kind of sharp actually. Uh, but, uh, but I'll tell you what, this thing stays planted in your hand. And, and if I had to look back at the, the three, I guess, most common Glock grips, uh, the, the kind of gen three and back and then the gen four and then this, I would say this one probably the best of them just because these tiny little things really really grab you man uh, but uh, but other than that the finish is kind of cool it's kind of an FPE finish whatever um, it's it, it's it really is a Glock it's I mean you know it's got some Vickers uh, accessories on it whatever like the, the the magazine base plate that sort of thing I mean who cares about that but uh, uh, but I, I think it's a cool looking Glock and, and I like the features and, and for the money it was a, it was a good deal and um, I, I still dig the Glocks, no matter what anybody says. So oh, nothing wrong with Glocks, man. Nothing wrong. With them. Yeah. Do they give it to you for free? I wish. I wish. Well, I'm about to give my Canic Elite away for free at this rate. 
Nobody wants it, huh? No, nobody wants it. Trying to sell it, guys. Do you know anybody who wants mine? Let me know. I'm not going to give it to you. Actually, Kaywood can use it for parts. <laughs> I tried to sell it to Kaywood, but he won't bite on it. <laughs> Gerald is saying that the uh, the P10 may take some uh, some Glock business once they get enough aftermarket parts and uh, and customize it. You know, Gerald, they, they might. I mean, I think that's probably one of the, the big allures of, uh, of Glocks is people, almost anyone can take a, a Glock apart and mm. they can throw the kitchen sink at it, whatever, and do whatever they want with it, which is, which admittedly I find enjoyable as well. Um, the P10, and I don't know, you, I don't know how many of you guys have checked out Hickok's uh, video that he put out today. It was really good. I, I like Hickok a lot. Yeah, I fell asleep after the first 21 minutes. Oh man, I you know I, I I enjoy him immensely, and he actually did take uh, the back plate off and he removed the striker, and and um, it's a little bit more finicky. Um, so I I would be I would be a little bit more leery of taking that apart. Although there is a guy out there that that has fully disassembled the P10, um, and it's over a two part video, and I mean he stripped the whole thing down. Um, I it's not something necessarily I'd want to get into, but it can be done uh, with a little bit of knowledge and uh, and, and w the willingness to destroy a gun if you have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I I I don't think CZ is ever going to match the aftermarket for a Glock. I mean, first of all, a Glock has such a corner of the market, but I just don't think they can produce enough units. I just don't think they can do it. Yeah. Um, they try, but they never meet the the demand. No, maybe they plan it that way, but uh, I think that's the only downer about it um, because you can't ever find them, and when you do, they're expensive, and there's not a lot of aftermarket support. Oh, and that whole myth about fitting in Glock 19 holsters, I'll tell you right now, that does not work, guys. It, this does not fit in a Glock 19 holster unless it's some sort of leather holster. Kydex, this bad boy is not fitting in a Kydex holster. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and then I had a question, you know, with this – Urban gray, and I'm not going to muzzle myself, but with this urban gray and this black one, you think I'll put the black back strap on this urban gray one? Um, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, what do you think? Think it look good? Sure. We'll ask. We'll, we'll ask the people in the audience. And see what they say. Well, uh, well, just make sure you match it with your nail polish. Yeah. With my lipstick bullets. <laughs> yes. And uh, the only other issue I had with this one, um, with the P10, was the uh, the mag release. My God, it's just um, it's a pain in the rear end to try to to eject the mag. It's almost impossible. I just I, I've been trying to break it in, so I've been actually pushing down on the mag release the whole time, and it's starting to loosen up now. But it is quite uh, resistant to wanting to release that magazine. That's for sure. If you need man hands. Well, man, I have man hands. You just have caveman hands. There's a difference. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah, do a pop stipple job on them. It only takes 20 minutes. No, they're uh, smoking locusts and saying if it's accurate, it really doesn't matter. No, I was talking strictly cosmetic. They're both uh, medium back straps. And. Um, I was just, you know, trying to mix it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> and I got this. <laughs> so are you doing some six shooting? Uh huh? You doing some six shooting? What's that? Is that with for the CZ? What's that for? Yeah, it was it was for the CZ. Uh, okay. Nice. Man, why don't you send that up to me? I need one for my PO9. You really want it? I'll send it to you. Yeah, if you don't want to use it, I'll use it. I don't care. It's an outside waistband. That's all right. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna start open carrying anyway up here. Screw it. Yeah, whatever. And break the law. <laughs> Todd is asking about uh, the Sig 1911 Nightmare. Um, I, I've never shot the Nightmare, but uh, but I've had the Tac Ops, the uh, and the the whatever uh, the the Scorpion. It's the not the regular Scorpion, the Emperor Emperor Scorpion or whatever it is, and, and they're great guns, man. Uh, Sig makes good 1911s. Uh, they're certainly a little different than your classic 1911 in, in look and operation a little bit, but uh, uh, but they're good, man. Uh, they're top quality. I shot my buddy's Nightmare, and he put uh, Wilson Combat uh, a kit in it, and so he tricked out the trigger and everything, and it was really really nice. 
really nice. But man, it's not it's not a cheap pistol though. Why do you guys think the uh, the fascination is with 1911s? Do you think it's just the nostalgia? Do you think it's um, you know what like what is the fascination? I've never had that per personal fascination with them. Like for me, I don't ever see myself owning a 1911. I've checked them out. I've held them. I just I don't know. It doesn't work for me. You know the I think the I don't like the the grip safety. Um, I don't like the necessarily the I don't I don't know what it is. I just don't like them. Uh, but what do you guys think? Because you both have had 1911s. I've never had one. What do you think the fascination with the 1911 is? Well, it, it depends on the type of 1911s you have, like, you know, less bears and things like that. I mean, they have incredible triggers, mm. uh, you know, hair triggers. And plus, I mean, you know, a couple that I had, I mean, they literally look like a piece of jewelry. You know, they're just beautiful guns. And, I mean, they fit your hands well. They shoot well. They're very flat shooters, um, you know, which a lot of CZs are also. Mm -hmm. But man, the triggers are, you can just tune a trigger and just make it incredible. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I guess I would say um, I, a lot of it's the, the nostalgia factor. I mean, you know, 1911s have a, uh, um, a very, very firm and, and devoted uh, following, largely because of things like the Colt 45. And, and I mean, that was the first gun I ever shot was cool 45. I think I was probably eight or nine years old. The gun almost blew me over. Uh, but, uh, but man, it was, it was just incredible. It was my grandfather's uh, World War II sidearm. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, I just, that it was the first gun I knew and, and I still have a, um, a deep fascination and appreciation for 1911s because they're just a different, different mechanical operation. And there's, yeah. there was a subtle beauty, I think, to a good looking, and I mean a good-looking 1911. I mean, there are some out there that don't really uh, inspire me quite so much. Not saying they're bad, just uh, I don't get excited about. But when I see a good-looking, cool 1911, um, even if it's pretty basic, it doesn't have to be super blingy. It doesn't have to be a Nighthawk custom or anything. Um, but uh, just about a 1911 that's just pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you know, but when you, like, you know, the – I mean, I've had a total of four, and I grew up on 1911s also. And it was the, you know, the Colt 45. That's what I shot my grandfather's a lot. And, um, you know, I really like the weight of the gun. You know, they're very flat shooters. However, when you go into the CZ line, you know, like the SP-01 and things like that, you won't get the 1911 type trigger uh, until you get into the shadow lines. But by shooting the shadow too, you know, I love that gun. I mean, it's heavy. There's no recoil. And it has a fantastic trigger and also that tan folio too. And honestly, they're more fun to shoot and it's got larger capacity. I mean, you know, and I look at it this way. I love a 45. I, I love the 45 ACP and always have. Uh, nine and 45 are my choice, but I can take the FNX 45, which holds 15 plus one. And I mean, that's super, super capacity. It's the highest capacity 45 round out there. And they actually make plus four extensions for it too. Um, and I mean, it's a fantastic shooting gun and it's a hell of a lot lighter than a 1911, mm. you know, with a lot more capacity. So, you know, I would definitely take that gun, you know, if I had to choose a 45. Mm. And as y'all all know, I ordered that damn 97 BCZ and I was all excited about that. And then that freaking fell apart, but that one holds 10 uh, rounds of 45, but steel gun too. Well, I mean, you can always try and contacting thegunguy.com. I did. He doesn't have it. <laughs> Email him. So. Shameless plug. It's, that it's, is. A very, <laughs> it's a very hard, I mean, it's very hard to find. It really is. You know, I've been on that list, and I'm not joking around. I've been on that list for over six months. So uh, I got that email. I was like, holy crap, and I hit it by now, and, you know, it was their screw up, and I'm still on the list, but we'll see. And I also added my list or added it to Tommy too. So he's going to see if he can find me one too. So smoking locust is saying, I really want a PPK for everyday carry. What's a good price. Um, my question would be why a PPK, you know, um, you know, the PPKs of like 40 years ago, probably are excellent. The newer ones I hear are, you know, not so good. Um, the PPK, uh, PPKs today are produced and the, of course the humor X factory, uh, and not the Ohm factory, so that's that's probably why. Because the uh, from what I I've read, the Umarex factory is very problematic for handguns over there. Yeah. What is in the house?
Awesome. Yep. Oh, by the way, Walter is giving a hundred dollar rebate on yep. PPQs and uh, PPSs now. I saw that. That's going to make it hard to sell in the aftermarket. Yeah, yep. I'm a lucky yeah. guy. Aren't I? Right there, hundred bucks <laughs> off. Just hold on to it for a while. Yeah, I got that too. But um, yeah, that's actually a hell of a deal. You know, there's a lot of people. You know, Remington's doing it. There's a bunch of people doing the hundred dollars off. Yeah. Well, I know for uh, a fact that Walther is going to be releasing a gun in the fall. Um, don't know what it is or what it's going to look like or what kind of gun, but from what I've been told, it's supposedly awesome. So whatever that means, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be uh, the SK type. It's going to be a concealed carry sniper rifle. There you yeah. go. It's, uh, and then Wicked is telling me not to get started with Walther. <laughs> By the way, you might want to look at my hat. They sent that to me, too. <laughs> yeah, you have to get your frog glue belt. That's why I'm wearing it, man. Everything I wear, I get an extra 100 bucks. Just Wicked, kidding. Totally Wicked kidding. is nearly limiting us. Can't talk about Walther or CZ, man. Yeah, I know. I know. Because like, he, he wants to try to talk about rifles and stuff. There's nothing wrong with rifles. Uh, okay. I know. I saw the same thing. Mary's saying don't play with her heart. KS, do we, what's going on? I can't help it. I'm playing with her heart. It's my fault, guys. You're, you're, you're quite the heartbreaker. I am a player. I am a so, player. So, uh, the other thing, I, I, you know, speaking of rifles, um, I've been getting a rifle itch lately. And so, uh, you know, I was looking at some ARs the other day and, and the way they have to, you know, redo them in New York State to make them compliant. It's just totally out. I, I just cannot buy a gun that has this really like stupid, weird looking uh, uh, buttstock on it. It just looks so retarded. It's not even funny. Or you have to pin the magazine. And I, I just don't want to do that. So I'd love to know, um, what do you guys think about like a, a 3030, a Marlin 336? Yeah. I had one of those. I love that gun. I right, sold right. it like an idiot. But um, I, was, I was thinking about getting one again because I have like, I think I have like 6,000 rounds of 3030 just sitting in my safe. Jeez. And um, great rifle. But it's a, I loved it. It was great, you know, but I'm thinking about getting another one. So I'd like to hear with the rifle experts, Wicked, what you think about something like that. Uh, of course, he'll come up and, well, you should get a blackout. And blah, blah, blah. I don't want to do that because they, they're stupid up here. I don't want to do that. I want something that is not considered an evil gun in New York State. I'm not saying I should build one. I thought about building one. I thought about that as well. That would be a Daisy Red Rider. Yeah. So, what do you guys think about that? What do you, what do you think, KS? KS, do you shoot any rifles, man? Um, not much. Um, I uh, I've I've had a thirty thirty. It's still in the family. It's an old Buffalo Bill lever action uh, that uh, used to hang on the wall in my grandfather's house. So that's still kind of in circulation. It's it's a fun gun. I seem to remember it being like a buck around a shoot or something like that, but uh, uh, but a lot of fun nonetheless. Um, I, that and I've had one AR-15. I, I am the last person you should go to for rifle advice. I really am. Uh, but yeah, man, do, do your thing. I, I say go yeah. for it. I mean, the only reason why is, you know, I've, I've had other gun, other rifles before, some of which, you know, you can no longer, um, you know, have in here. Um, in, in the state because you had you know register in which I wasn't about to do but uh, you know I like the Marlin I, I think it's a very underrated gun uh, I think a lot of people think of it as almost like kind of a toy gun so that's why I want I had one was because you know in case you get into a situation where you have to leave a, in a hurry you could always grab that and that gun has so many good uses for it um, it's got a very good uh, powerful round in my opinion the 3030 um, you know, you're talking seven rounds, so I mean, it's a usable rifle, and it's not too hard to reload as you're shooting. You know, you just pop it into the to the chamber uh, as you're shooting, and uh, I always thought it was a good rifle to have around. I still think it is, and uh, I love shooting. It was a good shooter too, man. Really nice shooter. Well, you know, Chuck Connors, a rifleman, used it, and he didn't have any problems with it. Yeah. And the you know the Henry is probably one of the nicest. Right? I love the Henry rifles. Yeah. No. Also, but Marlon. I mean, nothing wrong. Why do we have an echo again? What did you do? <laughs> nothing. God. It pops up on YouTube. I already read about that. 
Yeah, the 3030 I agree is a great cartridge, man. I, I, I just think a lot of people never count it as a, as a good quality rifle with a good enough amount of punch for self-defense. And I always thought it was it was great that way. Well, and one of my favorite rifles, and I've shown it before, uh, is the old German Mauser that I have, and it actually has swastics on it. Uh, my grandfather was a pilot in the war, the German war, and brought it back. So he left the swastics on it, and it's an 8 millimeter. and I tell you what, it'll get it done. And it is a hell of a rifle to shoot. And I do love it. But yeah, I do definitely like the Lapua too. That thing's awesome. I don't own one though. Maybe I should just buy an SKS. I don't know. Well, I mean, they're, I tell you what, man, the prices on those things have gone crazy. You know, back in the day, I bought two of them for 200 bucks a piece. Right, yeah. Well, you can burn them and everything, and, and uh, you know, the round is exactly, is this, you know, 7.62 round, it's a good round. Yeah, I would love to have uh, Pops's, that's CCMG, or CMMG, or whatever, that thing's awesome. Coda says, uh, ringing to 700. Awkward silence. Yeah, I know, guys. Let's go. Start talking, man. I got nothing to talk about. I'm trying to get the damn echo would go away. Well, you're the one who created it. It's the voice of God. It's back. Oh. <laughs> Zeus, <laughs> Zeus has a good idea. Find a place that does layaway and get what you want. I agree. Nothing wrong with layaway. Get a scar. I scar wish. Cool. I wish I could get a scar. Oh, yeah. They're awesome. And I'd like to get um, I, my my dream rifle is that damn Springfield Armory. I know I, I said it, but I, I'd love to get that Springfield Armory M1, man. Uh, I just uh, something about that rifle, man. Yeah. The so Todd, how much did that cost you to build that compliant 300, buddy? How much did that cost you? Talking about the SOCOM? No, no, no. Well, uh, no, I'm I'm talking about Todd right now. And he built a compliant 300 blackout. I want to know how much it cost him to do that. Hmm. <laughs> Daryl traded a 30-30 for a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a tattoo of a 30-30? So we could we could unsub me because I, I said I want a Springfield Army. That's all right, man. You'll be back. I do like the SOCOM, though. I think it's a pretty cool rifle. Yeah, I think they're really cool looking. Yeah, Pops has got one that's a safe queen. You wanna you wanna trade it for a canic? <laughs> <laughs> I think you, Pops. You, wanna, you guys want to talk about a worthless <laughs> gun? Holy shit! It is the most worthless gun that is out currently on the market. I I mean it's um it's got no value, none, zero. And the only reason why I'm selling it is because. I just, you know what, I got this and this just blows it out of the water. I mean, for an extra hundred bucks, save your money, stay away from that canic and buy one of these if you can find one um, because it blows it out of the water, <laughs> totally out of the water. Well, they can't seem to catch a break. Uh, I know Kay Wood was reporting all sorts of problems. He was having uh, trigger safety problems too. That's kind of a bad deal right there. Yeah, yeah. it's just, it's not worth it. I figured time would tell on that gun. I was wondering if, you know, because especially, you know, when uh, Century Arms jumped in that gun, you know, they were leaving it alone before and let the Canic do what they needed to do. But when they jumped in it, I think that's when the stuff went crazy. When Pops is saying that Jaeger said the gun is awesome, that's definitely <laughs> wrong. You're right. He, he, he knows everything. As a matter of fact, hold on. Hold on. I got it sitting right here, right there. There's my Canic. It's in its case. Just pack it up. Looking you know, for a new home. Abaddon, um, I, you know, I was curious too when, when I got mine and, and uh, I, I got lucky and had a good experience with mine, no failures or anything like that. It's actually a pretty good shooter. I mean, it has a good trigger and everything, but considering all of the problems that, uh, that they've had, 
Um, I, I just, it's, I, I think it's going to go away. I really do. Um, it's unfortunate. It was a great idea. And, and a budget pistol like that, if they can make one that actually works and stays together and, and, and feels like that gun does, that's a pretty good gun. They just couldn't get it right. And then, uh, who was asking me, uh, Eli's was asking what kind what is in the box? That's my elite dude. I'm getting rid of it. Actually, it's actually it's funny. I actually sold my, uh, my SFX already, and I sold it to Bald and Curious. Uh, we actually met up at a gun shop up here in New York, and he brought, he bought it for me. And um, so I've got this one right now that's just kind of sitting here wanting to go to someone else. But I ain't giving it away, I'll tell you right now. You realize that's why he's not here. He's pissed at you right now. Yeah. <laughs> But um, you know, I mean, I think I think they had a good idea with the elite. I just think that there's too many quality control issues right now with that gun. I mean, you know, personally, I didn't have any further issues with it when it came back. So from that aspect, I I think it had some growing pains with my gun. But um, I, for me personally, like even the ergos, it just doesn't feel right as good as like let's say this. And I have too many other handguns that are much better uh, overall. So they really, I, I just won't keep a gun that I'm not going to carry as often as I should. And for me, that's the disposable gun. So I would like to sell it, but so far nothing. So nobody, nobody wants it. Feel I, and I've got it at a good price. I don't care what any of you guys say out there. <laughs> I, I'm selling it for three hundred bucks. Uh, I think that's a pretty damn good price. I think a lot of people are scared of them now. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably. And it's bald and curious, bald and curious. Um, uh, you know, he's bald, he's balding. Um, curious. I didn't want to ask that question because I don't know what that meant. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to feel uncomfortable, <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, he knows his guns, man. He does, he knows his guns. And, uh, I, he showed me his, um, his arsenal strike one, I think it was. And, uh, and let me tell you something, you could tell he uses his guns, man, cause they were beat to hell and, and you could see they were run. And I like that. I like when people do that because that means he, he knows what he's talking about and he knows how to shoot. And I think that's great. Yeah. He showed you his Excalibur also. Yeah, he showed me his Excalibur. That thing was, whew, it was beat to hell, but it was a nice gun, man. Trigger was beautiful on it. Really nice in the hand. Really nice. Well, I was going to buy an Excalibur, but three of the mags were 56 bucks. Oof. Yeah. They look pretty sweet, though. And I mean, hell. The old wise is unhappy that I said three hundred dollars. Well, I mean, brand new. I just, got, I just got these in, and these are for the tan folio. And hell, there's seven mags in here. You know, I mean, I load up on mags, and I'm not going to buy fifty to six dollar mags and buy seven or eight of them. Do you ever stop buying things? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're like a order. You just buy stuff. No, I mean, I, hell, I shoot them. You know, when I go to the range, sometimes I'll take nine or ten pistols. <laughs> nine or ten. <laughs> well, oh, I mean, man. you know, I you know, I love pistols. You know, I'm not a drug dealer. You know. <laughs> so well, I mean, wicked sensation is making fun of the way I look again. He's saying I'm looking a little sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked, you're, you're Wicked, you know what? I'm, we're going to make you the guest speaker one night, and we're going to take a look at your fat ass on camera and see how good you look. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> oh, here we go. Say, who who must be single? No, 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 no. Are you saying I'm single? <laughs> Actually, I'm married. That's why I look sloppy, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and uh, anybody that's interested, that um, and I've got a video coming out, but that little uh, 22 cadet slide for the PO9, yeah, that thing is awesome. I mean, it shoots so well. You know, I ran 70, 70 rounds through it and only had one bad 22 round, so I was pretty happy about that. Wicked saying he looks more, uh, he still looks like his profile pic with a Viking beard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Big Daddy G, he's, he's talking, uh, speaking of mags, where can he find P320 mags, virtually non-existent? Check it yeah. Well, what they did is they, uh, SIG went away from Metgar, and they actually went to Checkmate, or Check, yeah, I think it's Checkmate, 
and those are the ones that are made in the U.S. And I knew that was coming, so I loaded up on uh, the actual Metgar mags before they changed them. And hell, I probably have some that I'll show you. I'm I'm going out and, and looking right now. I I saw them on uh, Midway a couple of days ago. Brownells had some also. eBay's always got, them, but they're ten rounders. So they're that's ten rounders. Yeah, that's nobody for me. Nobody wants your crowd. Yeah, I know. It's okay. <laughs> Hang on, I'm, I'm almost there. One, one of these days we'll we'll be able to have a, a big boy magazine. There's the Humble Marksman in the house. Yeah, and uh, Big Daddy G, if you can still find the Metgar mags, uh, they you know it's easy to tell on the mags they say made in Italy. You can find those, grab them up because when I got the first U.S. mag, it was a 15 round mag and I couldn't even get 14 rounds in it. I had to send it back. So uh, James Bond is asking, are there any uh, gun shops in Ulster that carry CZ pistols? Um, what you can check is you can check this website called thegunguy.com. Um, and you can check them out. They're local up here. He just opened up his own uh, internet, uh, you know, whatever website. And uh, it's hard, man. Um, it's very difficult to get them. There's just, it's too much demand. It's too much demand. They don't make enough of them. And when you can find them, you have to scoop them up quickly because for every five they produce, there's like 50 people that want those five guns. So unfortunately, that's um, that's the problem. It's not necessarily that people can't carry them. It's the fact that they're just not available. Yeah, I mean, that's like when I see them, I grab them up. You know, because they don't last long. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you want, you can check out... Um, uh, Walk Hill River Small Arms, uh, that's up here in Ulster County as well. Uh, they're, 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 in my opinion, the better shop around me. <laughs> Wicked says, laugh out loud, one more plug for that guy. I'm ripping him apart on Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, Wicked. This is, a, this is a real American who's selling guns, man. Come on. You're supposed to support people like that, damn it. I did. Yeah. And actually, Sean is making a statement. He said he hasn't had any problems with the U.S. made 320 mags. Sean, I bought mine when they first switched, and they did have problems with them, but since they fixed them. So. They uh, they do still have the full-size mags. I would just grab those. I mean, yeah. it doesn't really make, it make a difference. You're getting a couple more rounds with it. Actually, you can get the 25-round mags that go in the TAC Ops, and they'll fit the 320 also. Yeah, and the, uh, the three cal mags fit the P07. And if you got the newer, the newer P07s, um, not even the duties, the Gen 2s, um, they'll fit inside the, the P10s. But I have a Gen 2 P07 with the old magazine, so it won't fit, unfortunately, in the P10. I think Thomas, I'm going to take a Dremel and I'm going to make a template off my yeah. off my uh, P07 mag and do it on my I've got some PO nines that'll fit, but not these. Yeah. Um there was a question a second ago. Uh Todd was asking about SIG night sights. What do you guys think? Well oh, okay. I have a, a SIG three twenty with the factory night sights, if that's what you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Um I actually like this factory night sights on them. So I wouldn't spend any money buying anything else. Um, yeah. because they're they're really good night sights. You know, you don't have the big orange globe in the front, but you catch them really easily. They're extremely bright. Um, I will tell you, some of the brightest factory night sights that I've ever seen on any gun is on my P09, man. They're just ridiculous. It's like three flashlights staring at you. It's pretty yeah. impressive. Um, but these, the SIG night sights are actually very good. Yeah, these, uh, you know, freaking death rays here on this P09, those night sights, they're super bright. So, and these are the uh, suppressor ones. And they are very bright, so I'm sure when I get the other ones, they'll be bright too. Well, yeah, uh, those the, the Sig light night sights, uh, they do a good job, man. Uh, yeah. They're 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 good. Um, I've I've got them on my, I had them on my P320 compact, and I have them on the RX as well. Now they're the suppressor ones, but uh, but they do great. They're bright. So James Bond is asking, uh, what would it take for him to get my P01 off of me? Um, you mean this thing right here? You looking at this? Um, <laughs> six hundred bucks is yours. <laughs> we could just said six hundred shekels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, I, I really I like the P01 a lot. I just can't get my big old mitts on them. Yeah, even with that little extension on the bottom. I tell you what, I'm not selling this P01, man. I, I'd sell you my PCR before I sold you the P01. Yeah, I really like the P01 a lot. And I really like the P07 because I I can't have the P01, but the P07 shoots and and feels great. Yeah, I. I his pants. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, They're so attached. He's saying that he, he'll buy it for me for six. Sorry, buddy. I, I can't sell you that gun. That That is my, uh, that was the gun I never should have sold in the first place. And now that I have it again, it's going nowhere. But uh, but I will tell you, the PCR, it's a great gun also. I would I would consider selling that if I really had to. I like the P01, though, because of where the controls are, you know, where your decocker and everything is. Mm. Well, the P the PCR is in the same spot. It's just a little little different with the uh, slide release. Yeah, well, that's what I meant. It all feels better with big hands on the P01, I think. Ooh, four hundred bucks on Cajun parts for his Omega. I believe it. Wow. Yeah, it's out. They come with a new gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That stuff is expensive. So, okay, I'm still looking for a 75 SP01. Gun broker. You can find them. Yeah, they're out there. Or you can always try thegunguy.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wicked's gone again. <laughs> yeah. Wicked's had enough. He just he subbed me and then unsubbed me twice <laughs> just for that. Yeah, and then uh, realized the saying, that's why Glock is awesome. <laughs> Because you can find them in every store. That's true. Yeah, right there's right. no shortage of Glocks, which uh, which is I mean, it's a good thing. If you want one, you can go out and get one. James Bond it. says, "How about a Sphinx SDP compact and a 320 compact for that P01?" Shut why, why, why don't you just, uh, why don't you look, man? I appreciate it. That's a really nice offer, but uh, I have a P07, so I don't want the SDP. And uh, I have a compact 320, which I love. And I have a subcompact Steyr S9, which I love that as well. But uh, I just can't sell. I cannot give that PO1 up, buddy. Sorry, man. Unless you want to give me $1,000. $1,000, I'll sell it to you. I can't but. believe you'd put up a Sphinx, SDP. I like my Sphinx. Yeah, yeah I, I, I want to interject here a little bit. James Bond, PM me later. We might talk. <laughs> I've got a PO1 as well. <laughs> oh. Come on, KS. Don't be a don't be that a Sphinx. Out. That Sphinx is awesome. I don't care about the P320, but but yeah, that Sphinx is awesome. I'll tell you what. If you want, you can have my PCR for those two guns. Well, see what it says well, well, well. I bet he says no. Yeah, I know. He's, he's just oh, he repeating it. He's, try, he's trying to uh, brainwash me because he keeps <laughs> repeating it. Oh, it's a free trading subcompact. Yeah. Hell, I'll trade you my PCR for that SDP straight up. But shut up. He was going to give you the P320, too. Here, here's the, uh, the PCR, man. Boom. Ooh, beautiful. Okay. Hey, this KS, this is going to be you. Realize says P320 versus CZ P10C. I would never compare those two. Uh, no, they're. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm kidding. Um, I, I basically to sum up that uh, that video I did this weekend. They're they're both great guns. The the CZ took it, uh, took it by just a just a, a notch. And the only reason I say that, the only reason I really gave it uh, the the notch a little bit is is because of the way it fits in my hand personally. I like the way it fits just a little bit better than the P320. Keep in mind, I love the P320. It's a great gun. Um, I, that's a keeper. But uh, this just that fits a little bit better in my hand for whatever reason. And I actually, the, the trigger on this one, on the FDE, which feels a little different than the black one, um, I like it just a hair better than uh, the P320. And I've tried the Apex trigger, and I didn't like it very much. Um, and uh, but, but at the end of the day, the, P, the, the P10 was was a winner by a by a fraction. Damn, now James Bond says he would rather buy the cannon before he takes your PCR. <laughs> sold. Sold. Sold, Damn. man. 300. Damn. Shit. I'll even give you a holster with that. 
<laughs> That's awesome. It yeah, um, you know, in regards to the 320 and the, the P10, um, by the way, this was Sarah coded, uh, Patriot Brown on the frame. Really nice. Love it. Um, I have to tell you, you know, I, I, there are certain things I like about the 320 better than the P10. I like where the mag release is better. Um, it just seems a lot easier to be able to manipulate. I, the one problem I'm having with the mag release on the P10 is that I actually have to adjust my grip in order to release the mag, and I just don't like that. Um, you know, is that a major deal? No, uh, it's not, but I, I just noticed that as being the big difference. Um, they both feel really good in the hand. Um, obviously, you know, the SIG uh, is a lot higher in the hand than the P10 is, and I think that's also a big deciding factor while many people are going to like this better than probably the SIG 320. Yeah, and I'm actually interested in doing that uh, test that I'm going to do with the PPQ and the uh, and the uh, P07 with those springs, you know, with those SS guide rods. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's going to be so much the weight. I'm just wondering how the spring tension is going to be, you know, as far as recoil and just, you know, it's going to really eject them out well or better or right. weaker or what. So I'm interested in getting that thing fired up so we can see see what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me know how that goes. I like both of those guns a lot. I think you're going to feel it more noticeably in the, the PVQ than in that CZ, but. Oh, yeah, I do too. I do too. But, you know, like I said, I'm just going to try to keep a, it's just going to be a non-biased opinion because, hell, it might not do anything. We'll right. just have to see. But what are you playing with? Q5 match. Oh, yeah. I thought I'd make 1776 pissed off a little bit. Yeah, that's a nice gun. You need to put frog lube on that. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> or or grizzly grease. Great. I'm telling. I'm telling you, that stuff's awesome, man. That's good stuff. I'm switching to that 100% uh, uh, now. Wicked apparently is having some typing issues. I'll tell you a really good foil, and this is that battle or that breakthrough Battleborn Pro, and this stuff is really good stuff. Tell you what, you put it on the rails of the CZ, all steel rails, and man, it just, it's awesome. It's working really good. Now, Sean was saying he had, he had put the, the compact slide on the sub, the subcompact frame you of can. the 320 Yeah, it looks weird, but you can. Interesting. So does the dust cover cover enough of it to, to not have something like pop out of the bottom or whatever? Yeah, it won't pop out. It's a, cap, it's a captured guide rod. Very cool. So, Todd wants I mean, to see the gray uh, PPQ. Gray, gray <laughs> PPQ. Tungsten. Tungsten gray. Man, I got the uh, excess big dots on it, man. I love it. Love the side picture on it now. It's perfect. Very nice gun. Yeah, actually, Wicked, uh, Wicked says put the heat lithium grease on your guns. And I think, um, I mean, hell, on my AR, I run uh, wheel bearing grease on it, the old red wheel bearing grease. And a lot of people laugh about it, but it works awesome, and it has forever. Uh, the last, okay, uh, NC Civil War says, BJ, what's in the last box? Uh, well, I guess it's, it's going to be this one. It's a PO9 duty, but I put my urban gray slide on it. So I've got this one and this one uh, because IDPA, you can't run a threaded barrel that won't fit in the box. And so rather than buying a $150 uh, barrel, I basically got a $175 gun because I did get rid of one of the guns. And I'm not going to say which one it is, but it's one that I didn't care for. So that gun's gone and I had to pay a $175 difference. So... I did not get the excess big dot uh, idea from Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I swear. Uh, actually, I have the. Uh, let's see, who was was it? Sean that has that was trying to trade his SDP compact. I actually put the uh, excess regular dot, not the big dot, but I put them on my uh, Sphinx, and I actually do really like them. They shoot really well. I like them. Easy to pick up. Mm -hmm. 
What's Pop saying? I ignore him. I don't know. He's probably guessing on what's in the box. Was it the TriStar? Was it a, was it a redo? No, it was the it was the PO9. Yeah, no, he's asking. He's asking if you sold. What did you sell? Was it the TriStar? Oh, uh, okay. I'm not gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yes, uh, Wicked. That is where I get my grease too from Walmart. The wheel bearing grease. And you get the lithium there too. I got a freaking tub of it for like two bucks that'll last me three lifetimes. Yeah, I'm just kind of dry firing the PPQ, and I still think the trigger is, is still better than the P10. But I haven't shot yeah. the P10 yet, so we'll see. I yeah, mean, I think when you shoot both of them to see which one, you know, as you're shooting it, which one you really, really like. Yeah, I think the PPQ has got a better trigger. Absolutely. You know, it's so weird. Honestly, guys, I mean, it, it, to me, it feels so much like a Glock trigger. It really does. Um, lighter and a little smoother, but it feels just like a, a Glock trigger. What, the P10? Yeah. I don't know, man. I've been dry firing both, um, and these are both stock. I haven't done anything, anything to the new Glock. Um, and the, uh, the P10 has a much smoother trigger it's a lighter trigger by probably a pound pound and a half yeah um i i think it's a better trigger i mean i i have no problem with glock triggers but they don't bother me a bit mm -hmm. uh but uh, but the p10 has a better trigger i think yeah i think it does too but i think it feels very similar to a glock i don't think it feels uh, as like smooth as i don't even think it feels as smooth as a 320 even though three, the 320 is a six pound trigger uh, it's a very smooth six pounds you know this one just it just feels like it's a heavier Four, uh, four and a half pound trigger. It doesn't feel four and a half pounds, you know? Yeah. yeah and then Sean is saying he was close to buying a Sphinx STP a week ago, but deciding on Cajunized his PO1 instead. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I really I really like the Sphinx. Um, you know, it's, it is very comparable to the PO7. It's just kind of like the Cadillac version. Uh, you know, I mean, it's super nice. I mean, it shoots great. Um, you know, you have the full rails, etc. We all know that. Uh, and I really don't think it's that heavy. You know, I've actually carried mine, and I don't think it's that heavy due to the polymer, aluminum, and then the stainless steel slide. Uh, but it, definitely the PO7 is lighter. You all know that. But Hey, uh, Humble Marksman, just really quick. I know you said that you shot the P10 today, and you think it's significantly better than the PPQ and the grip. Um, I, don't, I don't agree with that, but I have a question for you. Have you ever, have you ever handled the Steyr? An M9 or an L9? Just out of curiosity. Because honestly, I still think the Steyr has great ergos, man. And I think the P10 uh, took a, a, a page from that playbook. Yeah, I, I'd never shot the Steyr until I shot KSs, and I actually really liked it. I mean, it, it definitely sits really low in the hand, and, and uh, it's a great shooter. Yeah, he shot the L9 at a match, he said. And what did you think? I don't know, man. I, they, I'm, I'm handling both the P10 and the, the Q5 match. They, they're so radically different, it's almost hard to compare the two together. Uh, PPQ has such an unusual uh, grip, and it's it's just sort of ridiculously ergonomic. It's it's hard to compare it to something else because it's just sort of molded for a hand, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said it does well. He prefers it my, or he, he prefers it to the Glock, or prefer it to the Glock by Miles. Nice. I mean, I, I just love the ergonomics of the Steyr. I, I just have to say they're really good, and I think it all boils down to this little cut out in the back. I think it makes a huge difference for people's hands. Yeah. Yeah, and they said Cajunizing SDZ gets you to a stock SDP. You know, the, uh, the double action on the SDP, it's not super light. You know, it's not like a shadow, uh, but the... Um, the single action is really nice. Hey, range. What's the rebate on the Steyr? Steyr. Hmm. I'd be curious about that. I like those S's. Yeah, Steyr. He said Steyr has the best ergonomics. And then uh, Mateo is saying that uh, 
the Steyers have been sitting in gun cases, but after several videos, now they're disappearing. It definitely wasn't mine. I'm sure it was Nut and Fancy, who yeah. apparently is the only guy who's ever heard of a Steyer. <laughs> yeah, and I actually saw two of the Steyers used, the nine millimeters, but they were the original version without the hole mm -hmm. in, under the rear sight. Mm -hmm. And man, they were asking like 450 for them. And I'm like, what? That's the old ones. They were used, of course, and it was at Cabela's. You know, they want a million dollars for their use crap anyway. Yeah, and, and James is saying that uh, the trigger, the reset is, is very barely, you can't even feel it. It's very, you know, it's a double action only handgun, and it really just resets back to its original position. But yeah. um, guarantee you it's not going to matter when you have to shoot somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Who's nutting fancy? Uh, Humble Marksman, they do have uh, aftermarket sights for the Steyr. They have big dots. And what's the other one? Uh, the, you can get uh, TFX Pros now for them. Yeah. And I think I think Trijicon makes some older ones for them, but uh, the, the better ones obviously would be the TFX Pros or the big dot. I have, I have a big dot on this one. Um, the only thing I didn't like was that it does not come with the, uh, the rear tritium. It's only the front, so it's just a white stripe. But, you know, I don't think that's going to be an issue shooting it at night, but um, you know, the TFX pros, eh, I've been moving more and more away from them. Also. Um, I, I just, I'm not a fan anymore. I used to be, but not much. I still have them on some guns and I like them. I mean, they're, they're nice even during the day with the fiber optic, but you know, they work pretty well. I the, the Ameriglows with the HD fronts, man, that's the way to go. They're awesome. The Spartans, mm -hmm. I've got those on that FNS, and I really like them too. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm digging the Ameriglows also. I really like Ameriglows. As a matter of fact, I spoke to somebody at Ameriglow, and uh, once I get that other little surprise that I have coming in here in the next month, which I, you know, if you guys are not allowed to say anything about, um, they said they would hook me up with some sites for it. So I was like, sweet. Cool. cool. Um. Oh, and here's he has the Trigicon three dots on his tire. Mm -hmm. John Warren does. Hmm. Okay, fifty dollar rebate on the tires right now. That's pretty cool. Wow. I mean, they're inexpensive to begin with. In fact, I, they, it sort of it kind of blew me away that they were that inexpensive. It's a it's a good gun for the money. Dude, but, you shouldn't even ask that question. Uh, a PPQ, the M1 for three seventy nine. You better jump on that, man. Yeah, it has the paddle release, but it's a long paddle release, so that's really I like that better than the VP9 short one. But for 379, dude, jump on it. Yeah, humble marksman saying for 400 dollars he would buy a PPQ. Yeah, yeah. And then James Bond is saying uh, Steyr had big FTE issues. They did on the original like first and second gens. Third generation got a little bit better. The fourth generation is what I have. Um, no issues with that. But they also had an issue with. Um, selling guns to people who were not exactly on the friendly list of the United States. So they were banned for a while from importing anything here. And I think that's what killed them ultimately. You know, now they're just playing catch up, but uh, you know, they have a long way to go. Oh, James Bond's offering. He said, forget the STP for the PO1. Get me on a live vid. And All right. So uh, James, <laughs> you can come live. I want your STP, dude. Freeze is in the house. And then Theolize is saying $300 for 1776 is Canic with a $100 rebate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You're right, you're right. It's $400, but I'll give it to you for three because that's your $100 there, rebate. There you go. There you go. He likes already, took that, already took that into account. Yeah, no. <laughs> he likes yeah, the talent grips make a difference too, uh, especially on this. There's not a lot of stippling on the, on the grips of these guns. And yes, I'm muzzling myself and there's nothing in there. Um, but, uh, it does make a big difference. Yeah. That's the first thing I told both of them is after I shot KS is I would definitely stipple the hell out of that thing. Hey, the, the M twos are 20 more dollars. Jump on the M two then for Pete's sake. That's a hell of a deal. Mm -hmm. And I think it's worth it. I actually, I do. I like paddle releases. I love my, uh, my DP nine, but, uh, uh, but I, I'd go for the button release on the people. Yeah. The only the only difference I, I have to say, um, I had a P99 and it had the paddle release, and I liked it a lot because it extended further out, so it extended about to right about there on the trigger guard, whereas the VP9 is right about there. So I know some people complain that's a little too short, 
Um, you can replace it on the BP9, but the P99 has it already longer. So I, I actually like that paddle release. I thought it was very functional. Um, you just take your, you know, your trigger finger, drop the mag, and you're ready to go. I, I always thought that was a good idea. Yeah, you know, for a lot of people that have the same type of guns across the board with the push button, you know, that's it, it, it is different to have one pistol that mm -hmm. stands out, you know, with the European type. Oh, two hundred dollars is better than a three hundred dollar paperweight. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I like three hundred dollar paperweights. <laughs> and then Trees is saying hello to you and KS and not me. Okay. That's because we said hi to him. Wait, what? Um, oh, actually, yeah. Here's a slot car lap. He said I'm looking for a, a double stack subcompact. Saw the VP9 SK. It is LGS for seven hundred dollars. Is it? Is it the? Well, hang on. Is it the LE with uh, night sights and three magazines? Oh yeah, might be. If that's the case, then yeah, seven hundred dollars is okay. That's that's not bad because I think their their uh, MSRP is like eight fifty or something for the LE. That's ridiculous. They're expensive guns, but they are they're also good guns. They're built pretty well. PK three eighty. Any side advice? Uh, no, I don't, I don't know what sites are made for the PK 380. Yeah, I don't either. It was the LE version. Okay. Yeah. $700 isn't too bad. I'd see if you can find it cheaper elsewhere, but 700 is not that bad. 1776. Are you throwing in the Kydex holster with the elite? I am. For 300, there you go, Paradox. Oh, and you have a, uh, a front night sight from Ameriglobe. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, wicked. Yeah. He, he wouldn't give you an ass beating for that gun if you highlighted <laughs> the, that you highlighted with nail polish. Hey, listen, don't be jealous that that's your favorite nail polish, man. I know you like it, so. Uh, He's going to paint up his guns. <laughs> Put the nail polish on the gun. Uh, James Bond, do I carry my PO1? Is it similar to carrying a Glock 19? Uh, I do carry it. I carry every single gun I own. Um, that's part of my thing. Uh, if I don't carry it, I sell it because it's got no worth for me. Uh, but I do carry the PO1. Um, I'm actually in the process of getting a new holster for it. And um, I contacted somebody called uh, um, 2A Holsters, and they're hooking me up with one. I had to pay something for it. But uh, that's going to be in the mail tomorrow, so I can't wait to get it because I've been waiting for a better holster. I've been using an old Klinger holster that's, you know, it's kind of crappy. But, um, you know, now that I have a new holster, I'll be carrying it more. I've been carrying my PCR a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, is it like carrying a 19? Uh, it's a little a little bit heavier, but it's it's super comfortable. It's super concealable. Uh, it's really nice. I love it. I, I can't complain. Um, Mateo's saying he thought the PK380 sights were the same as the P99. Um, not that I'm aware of. The P99 sights are identical to the PPQ sights. Yeah, and I actually, uh, yeah, and Swat Tarlap is saying that he carries this 320 compact. I carry mine a lot too. I really like it. I think I think you're right, Mateo, with the PK380 being the same as the PPS. Maybe I'm not certain. Uh, on that one. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of rotation of carry guns. I don't just stay with one or two. I like rotating them. Yep. All right, guys, any last minute questions? Because I'm about to bolt. I got to get off this thing. Yeah, it's about that time. Yeah, I got life calling me. <laughs> so um, let's see. Hope you guys have been talking about. <laughs> Heck yeah, man! All night. In fact, it's gotten boring. We've been talking about. It so we much. didn't. We didn't want to steal your thunder, Rich. Sorry, <laughs> man. Yeah. Let's see. All right. So, uh, you guys want to give any parting comments to anybody or anything, and tell us what you're going to be doing or what do you want to do? Go for a big game. Uh, I am actually going to be doing that test on the PPQ and the PO7 with the SS Guide Rod. Uh, probably try to do it this weekend. I'm going to try to film everything where I shoot it with the stock ones and then switch them over uh, all on camera to where we can get uh, 
you know, get an opinion of, of both and see how they work out. So I'm interested in, you know, like I said, it's going to be non-biased, but I'm just interested in seeing if it's going to help, you know? So either that, if that doesn't work, I could just tape a bunch of sticky tire weights on the PPQ and see how that would work. Uh, well, I've already talked about what I've got coming up. I've got a couple more surprises. I'm not telling anybody just yet, but, uh, um, uh, yeah, no, thanks everybody for joining us tonight. We absolutely love this mm -hmm. last chatting with you guys and catching up. Uh, this has become a, a, a real good crew and, and, uh, to all those who are kind of joining for the first or second time, we appreciate you come back for sure. And, uh, yeah, thanks guys. All right, cool. Uh, just a little parting, couple of parting things here. A uh, shameless plug for, once again, thegunguy.com. Check that website out. If you um, put your email in and you spread the word of his channel, he'll enter you into a gun contest that you can win a free gun. So that's always a plus, especially if you like guns. Um, what do I have coming up? I have one big surprise that's hopefully going to be here in June. Um, I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be pretty dope. I think depending on if it's a, you know, it could either be that or a big flaming piece of crap. I don't know, but I get a feeling it's going to be really good. Um, other than that, maybe a holster or two. I'm going to go shooting at some point, uh, shoot the P10, shoot the P09 and kind of, you know, share my thoughts on that and, uh, make a couple of videos on that. But, uh, again, guys, appreciate you all coming out tonight, uh, wasting an hour of your life sitting here talking with us and, um, James Bond, you suck too for not just uh, buying my Canik. And, uh, you know, as always, I, I just want to say thanks. And definitely thanks for the support when that guy stole all my, my videos. I do appreciate that because that was really cool to see everybody kind of rally around that and, uh, and help me out with that. So Wicked, screw you. Everybody else, have a great night. And uh, we'll see you here next week. Okay? Carry on, guys. Later, right. guys. Have a good night, fellas. Take care.